Welcome, I'm Saranya Ghosh, a third year student at MIT Manipal and in this video, I'll be discussing about the various hostels available at MIT Manipal, the main campus. First years are not allowed to live off campus unless you're a localite or stay with a relative. From your second year onwards, people can choose to live outside if they want to or if they don't get a room of their preference because of CGPA criteria. And I'm gonna assume that if you're watching this, you're considering MIT to be a potential choice for yourself or have already gotten admission into the college and are just waiting to come on campus. In that case, congratulations, so happy for you. If you're not, I don't know why you're watching this, but feel free to continue. But that is why the emphasis is going to be on first year blocks only. One thing to be noted, there is a strict rule that forbids people of the opposite gender to go into each other's hostels, which means boys cannot enter girls' hostels and girls cannot enter boys' hostels. The last time this rule was broken, it made national headlines. While booking, you'll see this one sheet, SAC is a single attached AC room. Attached stands for an attached bathroom with your own room. You're free to choose from whatever messes or food codes that are available to you or in a lot of cases, people choose to not even activate their cards. The fee is divided into three parts, the utilities bill, which is kind of like the water bill, the electricity bill, the maintenance and the Wi-Fi bill, all of them combined together. The mess fees and the rent. Don't worry, you don't have to pay them separately by yourself. They get deducted automatically on the 15th of every month. Now, for configuration specific discussions, I'll be starting with the rooms at the lowest point of price and then going up the ladder gradually. So, starting with the cheapest option, number zero, the triple sharing room. As the name suggests, it's a triple sharing room that you have to share with two other roommates, non-AC, and with a common bathroom that you'll have to share with everyone living on the same floor as you. The biggest advantage for these blocks is that they are the closest to the academic blocks. Another advantage is that all of the triple sharing blocks have a mess within the gates. So for food, you won't even have to leave your hostel gates. The taste and quality are subjective though. There is also a very big common area outside the hostels where you can practically play any sport and there are even benches where you can lounge on. I highly recommend this if you're an extroverted person or just someone who has trouble making a lot of friends. People stay up until like 3 o'clock in the night, chatting, gossiping and just having fun in general. For girls, it is blocks 1, 2 and 3. 4 is reserved only for seniors and for boys, blocks 5 and 6. Sometimes, instead of a triple sharing room, it becomes a double sharing room as well. But the main thing is, it does not come with a washroom attached, which was the main deal breaker for me. The washrooms get cleaned thrice a day and I've never lived in this configuration because I knew I wouldn't survive a triple van. But my friends who've lived there, they always speak positively about their experience in blocks 1 and 2. So number 1, double non-AC attached washroom. It's a double sharing room without an AC, but the main thing is you get a washroom attached to the room just for you and your roommate. First year girls used to have Block 7 as one of their options in this category, but they don't anymore because 7 now has only AC rooms. Then is 30, but that's only reserved for senior girls. Boys have 16 and 17 in their first year and 14, 15, 9, 8, all of them are reserved for the senior years. For first year guys, 16 and 17 have the best social life. They're massive blocks, which means that a majority of the people live over there. The closest mess is FC2, which is convenient for all meals except lunch when you have a full day because they are very far from all the academic blocks. Far is not even the problem, I think. It's downhill. So once a day at least, you will have to make the journey uphill to get to wherever you want to. Other than that, highly recommend it. Number two, the double AC room. For guys, again, the options are 16 and 17, 
For girls, now 22 gets thrown into the mix with 7. Block 22 does not really have an equivalent in the boys hostels because it is really new and fancy. It is a massive block, not really tall, but it's kind of like a maze. Every corridor has like 3 to 4 turns and it's very easy to get lost in there. Every floor's furniture has a different color scheme. The ground floor is green and yellow. The first floor is pink and light pink. Second floor again, I think yellow and green and the top floor is blue and grey. The most number of first years live over here so I feel like it's the best combination between comfort and social life. It is also the girls block closest to the student plaza and has the Aditya mess right in front of it. FC1 is nearby as well. So I feel like geographically, it is placed in the center of all things happening. For girls, I would recommend 22 over 7 because while 7 does have ACs now, it is much much older than 22. If you are getting them at the same cost, 22 is way better. For guys, again, the same old double attached rooms, 2 beds, 2 cupboards, 2 desks two shelves and an attached washroom. 16 and 17 have the exact same structure and the exact same kind of rooms. So in my opinion, it doesn't really make a difference as to which one you're choosing. Number three, the single non-AC. Now, this is of two kinds. There's a normal single room and then there's a deluxe single room. The deluxe room could be thought of as a 2BHK flat, two single rooms, one washroom that would be shared among the two people living in them and the common room which could be thought of as a hall the common room has a granite slab which you could use as a kitchen with a couple of overhead shelves as well. So if you are concerned about the mess food and want to cook for yourself, this is a great block to live in. You are allowed to get all sorts of things, microwaves, inductions, blenders, fridges. For girls, only block 21 has these kinds of rooms. For guys, 19 and 20. 18 has the same configuration as well but it is reserved for seniors. For guys. Proper single rooms are available in blocks 10, 16 and 70. They are what normal people would expect a single room to be, just an entire room with all the furniture to yourself. Now, some rooms in block 10 are just single rooms, they are not single attached rooms. You'll have to share the washroom with the entire floor. So, just make sure when you're booking, you look at the configuration very carefully and don't end up selecting the wrong thing. Number 4. The single AC. My favorite configuration. Exactly like the single non-AC rooms, but just this time with an AC attached. This is the most expensive configuration and also the hardest to get because they're just so few in number. I have gotten very lucky all the times to get these. For first year girls, again, it's block 21 only. 13 is reserved only for seniors. For guys, blocks 10, 16 and 17 and for seniors, 14 and 15. For girls, I would really recommend 13 over 21 as in when you move up the ladder. I've lived in both blocks and they could not be more different. 13 has practically all the advantages over 21 with the biggest one being social life a small recommendation or advice really if you don't have a problem sharing rooms or washrooms in your first year at least you should be going towards a sharing room more don't go for a single room when you're new on campus you hardly know any people your first month over here may be spent only just randomly saying hi to a hundred people and maybe not having any actual friends our batch was sort of lucky in that aspect we had spent six months online already so i already knew a lot of people before I even arrived on campus and even then I felt like it was really difficult to actually make friends. So when we finally arrived, it wasn't at least completely unknown faces at all. If you're directly starting with online classes, which is what is going to happen from now onwards, making some friends in your blog is the best way to get started. A blog with only single rooms will not have a lot of people going to each other's rooms. The more privacy you get, the harder it becomes to socialize with people in that block because it is kind of given that everyone who is living over there also wants privacy so they don't really mingle around that much. Whereas that is a very common occurrence in sharing rooms blocks especially the triple sharing ones. 
I've also heard that in like triple sharing rooms, they just never close their door, which makes a lot of sense. There is no AC. Like I've seen a correlation with AC rooms and socializability. Like they're inversely proportional. The more ACs that you have in the block, the less social it becomes. So you can just barge into anyone's rooms and like keep talking throughout the night and hopefully make a memorable friendship that lasts for lifetime or at least beyond first year. That is it for today. Wait, 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 wait. Drop all the questions that you have in the comment section. As always, like, share, subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!